I am still recovering from my travels in Africa. I'm actually in the middle of a parasite cleanse. For those of you who do them, you will know that this is sometimes not a pleasant thing. But I will say we are, this organism is the temple of God. It's the temple built in silence without tools, as the Bible says. This temple should be clean where you can make it clean. When it's not clean, the divine vibrations are not so easily heard. And so I, I always recommend parasite cleanses, but if you've been in Africa, definitely. <laughs> so I'm feeling a little disheveled, but all will be well soon. But what I want to talk about is that I have been taking this linguistic framework that I used recently where I had this experience where I spoke to a higher dimensional species. I then looked at the creation stories of the Sumerian texts, the Popol Vuh and others that link the notion or, or say in some retrospects that humanity, that we are, the human species we are today, is the result of a genetic interference by an alien force. And that interference was done in part to make an alien slave species, an alien slave technology, therefore, is the vessel that we inhabit as a soul, in part. There is still the bricks and mortar that God put forth, but they were hacked, they were genetically interfered with. And so this theory, this linguistic framework, I've used it over the last weeks in my own time looking at various things that I know. And ultimately this can be represented in all of the spiritual texts and teachings. If you look at Yeshua, he says spirit and flesh. If you're governed by flesh, you're dead. If you're governed by spirit, you're alive. Alive in spirit is to be with God. The journey of the soul that is encased in the human body that is interfered with and therefore has an alien slave technology hardware within it. The journey of the soul to backwards engineer that and get free is potentially the story of rebirth that Yeshua spoke of. Buddha spoke of the ego. The ego is potentially, is in this linguistic framework, that element of the alien slave technology. For it is that part of humanity when you come in as awareness, which is what we are, what a soul is, you are loving awareness. You come in and the technology of the mind grabs at that and makes you form a self-image which separates you from the presence of God. And I argue that that separation through what I've seen doing work and, and doing work of deliverance on persons where I've taken entities off people, that these entities feed off our separation from God. And therefore, having a soul encased in a human vessel that separates from the presence automatically through the, the technology that's hacked in can be a battery source for the higher dimensional negative forces or the demonic realm. And so this enslavement concept seems to work well with many, including myself. But what I want to put this on is some of the mystic side of what I know. So I want to look at the story of Moses and ask, was Moses a story about fleeing, escaping, deprogramming the alien slave technology? Now for many, if you are religiously programmed, I will say, if you have a deep religious upbringing, this may be a little more difficult for you. But I would ask you to take any literal story that you hold or any historical character you have an image of in your mind and just put it to one side unscathed and untouched I'm not touching any historical story what I am touching is the mystic writings that were written into the spiritual texts around the planet and they have a chord within them and I want to elaborate on that the ancients as with all of us, we point with words. Words are not the artifact, they are not the actuality. The tree is not a tree, the bird song is not bird song. The word points at that. And that happens outside of language, outside of human language. 
And when we get caught up in human language, we lose track of seeing reality because we see the words and we 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 don't see or feel, we don't partake in the experience of the reality the words are pointing at. And this is part of the technology, arguably, that buries us into the into the mind. And so the ancients, they also pointed with stories. The mystics, they pointed with symbology and stories. And so coinciding, running alongside the scriptures, there was a mystic language. And this had to be done. If you just look in France at the Cathars, the last stronghold of the mystics, the Gnostics in Christianity, they were obliterated through genocide. It was vulgar what the Catholic fundamentalist church did to them, burnt them alive, most of them. Because they dared to, they weren't perfect, but they dared to want to have a direct experience with God and fundamentalism couldn't handle that and so they killed them. And so mystics learned long ago to encode the truth because fundamentalists can't see it from that level of consciousness, but those with the mystic mind will. And so this language is documented and it runs alongside the Bible and every other text and that can't be denied. You, you, you can read this and look at this. And so, with that said, the words that were used in these stories had a dual meaning. And so this is fascinating on the story of Moses because the story of Moses is actually a story in the mystic sense of the biology, the technology of the human body and how the soul must escape its bondage. So take the literal to one side. The mind will want to say, were the Egypt aliens? Take that to one side and look at you the journey of your soul to escape the technology of the mind, the hacked hardware of your, of, your, of your organism, that journey. So Egypt in mysticism, Egypt always represented the carnality or the lower mind, which is the alien slave technology. So Egypt is the alien slave technology, according to the mystic text, carnality. Moses is the soul. An Israelite is the human organism that is governed by the voice of the soul and therefore the voice of God. A Pharaoh is the human organism that is governed by the ego or the self-image that Egypt creates. So you have a human organism and if the alien slave technology is engaged, Egypt, it will generate a self-image which is false, a pharaoh. And the soul, Moses, will come and will start to call on the being to leave the bondage of this alien slave technology. As Moses calls the Israelites, he calls the human organism to be free in the moment and governed by the soul's voice or the voice of God. And we all know the story that indeed the, there is success. Moses takes the Israelite away from Egypt. He takes the human organism, the soul calls the human organism and its activity into a new way of life, into a way of life governed by the voice of God and free from the bondage of the alien slave tech Egypt. But of course, the self-image is very rooted into the technology of the human body, into the biology, into the organism, the pharaoh. And so it chases after the soul and it chases after the Israelites. It chases after this new human. The new human that's moving in humility and in the voice of God is chased after by the ego and its arrogance and its pride. And the pharaoh chases them down. Now, before all of that chase happens, the soul goes to the Pharaoh, it goes to the ego and says, I'm going to liberate this human organism, the Israelites. Remember the Bible says, a Jew is not a Jew outwardly and a circumcision is a circumcision of the heart. In mysticism, an Israelite is one who has cut away the lower nature or, or trying to or aiming to or, or living that way. An Israelite is one free of the alien slave technology, free of the lower mind, free of the flesh, as a Christian would say. And so the soul goes, Moses, to the ego in Egypt. The soul reaches into the lower self, the alien slave tech. 
and there the ego stands and it says I want to take with me this human organism from the bondage of this technology and this lower self and the voice of the Pharaoh the ego says no and so Moses takes a staff the soul to do this takes the staff now the staff in ancient times this has been destroyed by Christian fundamentalists but they are wrong they are wrong they say Kundalini is a spirit Kundalini is not a spirit Kundalini is a representation of the limited life force inside a human body Kundalini represents the man who lives by spirit automatically retains that energy a man who lives by flesh spends it on riotous living if you're living by flesh and you're not living by the wholeness and contentment and peace and, and, and joy of God, you will seek pleasure and that will spend your finite energy and you will spend it on riotous living, on sexual immorality, on whatever else you're going to spend it on. To try and satiate the void that you feel from the separation of the wholeness of, of God's presence in your life. And so this was represented by uh, energy snaking up the spine. Moses throws down his staff at the Pharaoh and it turns into a snake. This is representing that the soul will be heard in the organism when the organism, the human, starts to live in a more appropriate manner. When the human no longer lives for pleasure because of separation and starts to live for love and compassion and charity because they feel whole and full, the energy is filled within them and when the energy is filled the voice of God is heard and so the staff represents that and this is the soul's challenge the energy is high the soul challenges the Pharaoh and says I'm taking this human organism from the bondage of this mind the alien slave tech and of course there's two magicians and they cast some snakes down and the the serpent the the snake of Moses eats them both and so this represents that the strongest energy is that of the righteous living. The spirit is the stronger of the two powers. The, the pull of the spirit is of greater magnetism than the pull of the flesh once you have awakened it. And so we know that Moses then leaves with the Israelites. The soul leaves with the human organism now free in the present moment, governed by the voice of God. But the alien slave tech has not finished doing its work. It's still within the organism and the ego is still present there too, the pharaoh, the false ego. Everybody needs an ego, but your ego is supposed to represent the Moses element of you, your soul. It's not supposed to represent the technology and the pharaoh, but this is what happens. It represents the, the, the voice of the perception of the alien slave technology. The ego we generate, the self-image of the soul, is the true ego. The false ego chases you down as you leave. And so they reach the Red Sea. And red in mysticism means emotion. And so once Moses crosses, once the soul gets the human organism across the emotional nature, there it is separated from the grasp, the heavier grasp of the alien slave tech and the self-image that it has generated inside the human being. This story continues to talk about the technology. Moses in the desert takes a bronze serpent and places it upon his staff. And he says, all who look upon this serpent will be saved and all who are not looking upon the serpent are being bitten by poisonous snakes. It's referencing the same thing. Even when you are free, even when you get free from the technology, you can fall back in. You can fall back into spending your energy in the wrong way and you will be eaten up by that, by the flesh, by the pleasure, by the demonic pull that is on us to do that, to feed. The separation from God feeds the, the higher dimensional species we reference here, or the demonic realm. And so the fall away, when you fall into pleasure, that energy is spent. And when it is spent, this poisonous snakes bite you. And Moses reminds the human organism, the Israelites, the human organism governed by the voice of God. He reminds them, reminds it, look up. 
Look to the righteousness of spirit and your energy will be maintained in the body and you will be able to find joy and peace and thanksgiving in the simplest of things. So much so you can share it with others and live by the, by the fruits of the spirit, as they say in Christianity. Live by, by the higher ideals of a human, by the beingness, not by the animal nature. And so this is again representing this energy climbing up the body, the bronze staff on the on the, the bronze snake on the staff. Now beyond there, the ancients knew the structure of the body and this energy that moves through it, and repetitively they knew there were seven main energy centers that center around the endocrine glands of the body. Moses, at one point in the story of Moses, is wandering in the wilderness. And how long is he in the wilderness? He, when he wanders in the wilderness for so long, he meets seven sisters at a watering well. These are the seven energy centers. You find union eventually in the wilderness. You find union with your body. When you align with spirit, you don't need to know this to align with spirit. But when you do, this all activates. This is how you start to live from that higher ideal. When all of this is separated and you're pouring that energy down, you're being bitten by snakes, you're feeding the demonic. And so this is a repetitive theme in ancient texts. Nebuchadnezzar's lost in the wilderness for seven years, uh, for example, so on and so forth. The Noah's Ark is in the storm for seven, seven, it's on and on and on. And it's, it's referencing the internal soul it's referencing the soul being lost in the alien slave technology. This is my argument, and I believe this is correct. I don't even believe, according to the documented language, this is what they wrote it for. I know this is how they wrote it, many of them. And so, Beyond the, this technology that we are in, this human vessel, which is bricks and mortar of God, but hacked by an alien species, so as we see the world through the perceptions of the alien slave technology. It also has functions within it. And one which I've mentioned before is that our brain can operate on different frequencies. And those frequencies help us perceive different vibrations of reality. Your lights, your, your eyes see a very minimal, a spectrum of light and so operating in different vibrational states or brain frequencies is quite important in modern science we have beta alpha theta and delta beta alpha theta delta are the frequencies of your brain when you hook a person up who's meditating to some diodes and you measure it you will see the brain move beta alpha theta delta when you meditate without that, you feel these states of consciousness. Now the ancients, they didn't have scientific apparatus. And so they knew these states of consciousness through experience, not through external mechanical observation, but through self-observation, self-experience. And so they labeled them four words, earth, water, air and fire. Moses must climb a mountain, he must go to a higher place in consciousness, and there he meets the voice of God in a burning bush. Beta, Alpha, Theta, Delta, Earth, Water, Air, Fire. The burning bush is the voice of God. The burning bush inside you the baptism, Jesus will baptize you with fire. It says in the Bible, you will meet Jesus in the air, then you'll be baptized with fire. First of all, though, you must be baptized with the water of John the Baptist. Earth, water, air, fire. Beta, Alpha, Theta, Delta. The voice of God is heard in Theta and Delta. Unless you become as children, you may not enter the kingdom. Children operate in Theta and Delta frequency until the age of about eight years old. This is why we shouldn't really give them screens, because you're polluting a gift. You're polluting an early gift of connection, because screens put you into beta and alpha. And this is where we're getting all of our, in my view, 
ADHD and so on and so forth, a lot of it's due to screen exposure that shouldn't be happening to children until they're at least eight or nine years old. And so the ancients knew, they knew, and they didn't use scientific terms as such, they used much more romantic language, but they knew. They knew that this human organism that we are in has an alien slave technology hacked into it, which they reference as the lower mind. Maybe they just call it the lower mind. They don't have a reason for its causality or where it's from. They say the fallen nature of Lucifer created it, however you want to term it. But using this linguistic framework, the alien slave technology has created a self-image which is false. Egypt created a pharaoh. The soul, Moses, must liberate the human organism that will now be governed by the voice of God from the bondage of Egypt. It must cross the emotional nature to create that disconnect. And to do so, it must live in spirit and therefore the energy will be maintained. And when the energy is maintained, it rises. And when the energy rises, your awareness can fall back through the alien slave technology and its perceptions to the point whereby which the technology grabbed the soul, where the soul entered. And that area is the pineal gland. And of course, the Egyptians were famous for the eye of Ra and pineal gland. However, the pineal gland, when you receive a vision from God, when you pray in tongues, which I do, I speak in tongues, I pray in tongues, and I receive visions, they come in my mind. And they are, they are deadly accurate. They guide me very well. Those visions arise inside the pineal, is the argument most have. The pineal is filled with light reactive crystals. It has a retina within it. It just makes sense that it's there. <coughs> when the pineal activates, it secretes DMT. When the pituitary activates, it secretes serotonin, an amber substance and a milky substance. Arguably, the land flowing with milk and honey. The soul comes, it frees you from the alien slave technology, the ego chases you down, the false ego, the pharaoh, but you separate across the emotional nature and you get freedom from it. The soul reminds you, do not, whatever you do, let that energy fall, because if you let that energy fall, poisonous snakes will get you. There's also a wall in the story of Moses where he's holding up his staff, if you recall. If the staff comes down, they lose the battle. If it stays up, they win. It's the same story. It's the same going on inside you. If you lose focus and you start spending your energy on the alien slave technology and its perceptions, you are going to lose the battle. And therefore, this whole thing points to one thing, liberation and freedom. Freedom as a soul inside this body to walk in the loving presence and the voice of God. And that comes not by engaging the alien slave tech, but by pressing the sleep button. By letting your awareness pay no attention to it and its babble. By letting your awareness be reborn. And so all of this points us to something. It points us to freedom. And that freedom is the truth. And that truth is a loving presence, so free of conditions, so penetrating, that I have no other word for it but God. But that presence of unconditioned love is exactly where these ancients were leading us. They were leading us. They were leading the soul that for whatever reason is lost inside your body, lost inside your mind, be it alien slave technology, be it a demonic fall of man, flesh, ego, alien slave technology and its perceptions. Your soul, as the loving awareness it is, is lost in there. And these ancients found their way out, and you can find your way out there today. 
if you are suffering, if you are struggling, if you do not feel that wholeness, that love, that contentment, if you can't sit outside and just be in bliss, sitting under a tree in the sunny day, no need to pull out your phone, no need to run to the refrigerator, no need to run to the bar, all of these things in moderation, in time, but if you can't take your greatest joy from the stillness and the presence of God found there, these stories are for you today. And maybe you have these stories stored in you historically, and that's okay. It doesn't change that today these stories can also bring you freedom. Absolute freedom. Freedom from the bondage of the perceptions of your mind of the alien slave tech. And there, as an empty vessel, there as a human organism, free of mind, then all of the senses in one fragment, one, one moment here and now without memory, just as a continuance, this moment is an expanding ongoing dance, nature, birds, trees, wind, you can join that dance, you don't need to analyse it, you don't need to label it, you can join it, and, and as you join and slot into that dance, there something new arises in you as a human, something most call supernatural. But it's not supernatural, it's who you are. It's what life is. It's what life is behind the alien slave tech. It's the freedom that you were. It's the freedom that you are. It's, it's the freedom waiting for you to vibrationally align to. It's the love of God. <laughs> it's the presence of God. And it's here, and it's now. And it requires no labels, no memory, no language. It just requires a pure faith and a trust in God's love. And there arises the grace and the, the bountiful happiness and joy of living in the presence of God in a life that many will deem to be supernatural, but to you is just the norm. That's how you were supposed to live, it's your birthright. It's all our birthrights. And your soul's waiting. You wouldn't be listening to me if not. Your soul is waiting. It's waiting to flee the bondage of Egypt and the Pharaoh and it's niggling. But it needs you to look up the bronze serpent. It needs that. You have to maintain that energy. The world has no allure. Once you're in the land flowing with milk and honey, the world has no allure. The pleasures, the flesh. They are experiences inside the joy of the land. They are not a pursuit of a pleasure or a joy. They are just in this sustained joy of the land of flowing with milk and honey. They are just an experience within there. If you're not in that land, you'll look for these things in the hope of something. That's the difference. So if it resonates, as I always say, and you say, yes, I'm ready. How do I get free of this Pharaoh? That's probably the voice of the Pharaoh inside you right now. So put it down, hit the sleep button. Let a different voice speak. Not your own voice, but a voice from, from in here voice of the soul, voice of God. Be still and know that I am God. The story of Moses is leading you to the burning bush, which is Theta Delta, which is a still mind. And there you will know, undeniably, Thank you.